Hi, welcome to another video from my home. This is uh, again during the coronavirus lockdown. Some of you might be aware that uh, in my early years I spent a lot of time uh, working for our nature conservation, our nature conservation department, and I was a marine ranger in charge of a marine reserve and sanctuary. During that time, I got involved in many scientific projects, and uh, these were to do with whales, dolphins, sharks, skates, rays, crayfish, and many other invertebrates. I've still kept a great interest in the research side, and uh, one of these has been to help with the uh, collection of biopsy samples, the easiest way to collect and with the least harm to the shark. Basically, it's a tube. We fire this small tube into the side of a shark. This extrapolates a skin and tissue sample and the length and depth that goes in is relative to how we set a stopper on this. I'll show you some of this in close-up shortly. So, how it works is we have a tube. It was a solid bar that we've bored out. You can just see there, it's hollow. The diameter is 10 millimeter and it's been bored out at eight millimeter. That gives us a one mil wall thickness, but this edge here is very sharp. This works like a cookie cutter, and inside there's a series of small grooves that help hold the sample. That's the basic tube in itself that has to be shot into the shark. To control the depth, there's a tube with a rubber stopper on it, just a piece of spear gun rubber tied off to stop it going any further. And this can vary to control the sample size. Both these will be stopped by a washer. That stops the rubber sliding back. I'll go into more detail on how the rest looks. As I mentioned, the cutting edge is obviously up front. It's sharpened internally, not from the outside, but from the inside. That means the cut will be 8 mil in diameter, compressing to 6 mil. This compression is what helps retain the sample inside. As you know, if this tube was not hollow, the water inside being non-compressible would prevent the sample being captured within. As you can see, this goes right through. And because of that, we need a method to let the water out. We could simply drill holes at the bottom, but that would mean this could only be used once whilst being attached to a spear. I believe the best method is to have multiple tubes, that's obviously the tube with the rubber, that is attached to a base. This base is fitted to a spear. The spear will be screwed on to the base. The tube then screws into the base. This tube can then be kept sterile, fitted, sample taken, screwed off and sealed away. Now, obviously, the water inside here needs to be repelled. This water will be forced down here into the base and outer valve here. Here's one pre-made. The hollow section ends at these holes. There are four holes here allowing the water out. It's blocked off beyond that, so when you come from the other side, it's blocked. The only escape is out these holes. 
The size of the hole out the bottom here is four millimeter and the holes to allow the water to exit, there's four of them, they are 2.5 millimeter. That's more than enough to enable the water to escape. With the completed device, we have a square rubber o-ring over the holes. What this does is when the water is forced in, it blows out past this o-ring. Once out, the o-ring will shut down and create a seal. It's basically a one-way valve. This one-way valve enables the sample, once inside, to now be sucked out. There will be a vacuum. It will create a vacuum once you pull. This is a great advantage. Not only is it compressed when it goes in by the way the tip is cut, the ribs also help to hold it. And inclusively, there's a vacuum that will form once the water has been expelled and the valve shuts off. This can now be extracted from the shark, withdrawing a small sample. As you can see, the valve is in a recess. Here is the base tube without the o-ring. This enables it to stay in place and obviously can easily be removed and replaced and cleaned. Once the bobs is taken, this will unscrew and if the sample needs to be removed straight away, a four millimeter shaft being thrust up the rear end of the sleeve will extract the sample. So, now you've seen another side to our business. We not only manufacture spearfishing equipment, but we also help out where we can with various scientific projects. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, stay safe out there during this coronavirus epidemic.